Hi, I'm Micah, and today we're going to talk about that feeling that you get when you go shopping and you feel like nothing looks good on you. And even if we're trying to dress better, we don't even understand where to begin. And then you just end up thinking that fashion is not for you. We get sold the idea that being stylish is extremely simple. It's something that you either have or you don't. Style is not easy at first, especially when you don't have the right tools to do it. Let's remember that people go to school to learn about how to dress better and how to style others. So it's not that easy and you don't have to worry if you don't feel like you got it figured out. So how do you determine what looks good when there are so many things out there? This is where style systems come in. Style systems organize fashion rules and guidelines to make things not only a lot easier, but it also helps you choose where you want to start. There are a lot of style systems. Basically, every stylist has a personal one because we get to base at fashion school and then we start adjusting it for it to fit our specific clients. Some of them focus on colors some of them focus on body shapes and others do their own thing and just go for whatever feels right and some others do all of the above none of them are right or wrong it's just a preference and if you're looking for a stylist or a style blogger for help you should look for someone that focuses on the areas that you want help in if you want me to help you you can subscribe and continue watching my videos you can also visit my written blog for extra resources by going to my website michaellumsen.com And if you want to hire me as your personal stylist, you can do it at kokostyling.com Color systems They focus on highlighting your best features by choosing the right colors for you. How do you know what colors are your best colors? The idea is to replicate the colors that you already have in your features. What you need to take into account when you're working with color systems is your skin, your hair and your eyes. And then you can figure out the color dimensions of said features. To understand color dimensions, we need to know a little bit about color theory. It can be a bit overwhelming, so I'm just going to mention them and leave a few helpful links on the pinned comment. The three main color dimensions are hue, which is the color itself, and also making a separation between warm and cool colors. Then there's value, and that defines how light or dark your colors should be. And finally, we have chroma, or saturation. That will determine how bright your colors should be. You might be familiar with the 12 color seasons, this is the most famous color system out there, and most of the other color systems derive from this one. Some of them have 4, 8 or 16 seasons. Mine has 8 and it is based on a scale because not everyone is the same even if they share a season. If you watch my example videos of each season, you will be able to see that. Most color systems draw colors from your own body. For example, the color of your eyes, the pinks in your palms, the tips of your hair, and then they add a few accents that derive from them. Some of them also assign a personality to each type, which can be a little bit odd since it can limit what looks good on you if your personality doesn't match that description. Well, not necessarily what's going to look good on you, because technically that is always going to be the same unless you go through drastic changes, but it would limit the colors that you associate with that type. But it is definitely a fun concept. Body shape systems. If you search how to dress better on the internet, one of the first things that you will find is that you need to dress for your body shape. You might be familiar with the rectangle, inverted triangle, apple, hourglass, and pear shapes. 
Sometimes you will find other names like rectangles being bananas and inverted triangles being referred to as strawberries. With the body positivity and body acceptance movement, it also came the rejection of the body type system. So the idea is that you should ditch the system and wear what you love. I do agree with the wear what you love part, but what do you do when you don't know what you love in the first place? Let's keep in mind that fashion rules are just a guideline. You can break them if you want to. Actually, I do encourage it. But before you do that, you should know what they are and why. There is a big difference between just telling someone don't wear off-shoulder tops versus telling them that if they wear horizontal lines on their shoulders, it will widen the shoulder line, making their shoulders look broader. If they don't like having white shoulders, the first tip will be very helpful, but if they do like them, it leaves them wondering why not? if in their opinion it looks good and it also gives them the notion that having white shoulders is a bad thing the other option allows them to choose what they want if they don't like having white shoulders they can avoid the off shoulder top but if they do like having white shoulders they can wear that type of top and accentuate their shoulders the main goal of the traditional body type system is to achieve top and bottom balance. So, if you have more visual volume on your bottom half, you should try to add more volume to your upper half and vice versa. Basically, the idea is to create the illusion of having an hourglass body shape, which is considered the ideal body shape. The thing is that trends change a lot and they're not just about products. Body shapes can also be trendy. All of the body shapes have been trendy at some point, which is very weird. <laughs> you can change your clothes, but the only way to change your body is to get surgery, which is very extreme. Getting surgery to feed a trend instead of doing it because of your preferences leaves you with the risk of having to change it again when the trend is over. So body shape styling does have issues, but if you use it just as a guideline to understand how clothes accentuate different features, it is actually a very good thing because you get to understand your body a little bit more. And then you can choose what to do with that information. Just as a side note, know that you can be a mix of body shapes. I'll talk about that at some point, so don't worry if you're not 100% sure if you're a pear, a rectangle, an hourglass, an apple, or an inverted triangle. I do believe in using it as a base to understand how body balance works, but also another issue about this system is that not everyone looks the same. Even if they technically have the same body type, what happens when you're very short or if you're very tall or if you're a lean hourglass or a very curvy hourglass? This is where the next style system comes in and it is also the most complex so you might have to rewind a little bit and i do have other videos about it and here's the link to that playlist body structures and yin yang archetypes the other thing that you will find on your initial investigation for your style journey will be random fashion tips and hacks which can be very, very useful. But if you don't have the body that they used for the examples, it can't end up doing more harm than good in regards to looking better or understanding how fashion works. If you have ever looked into the fashion staples that you need in your wardrobe, you will get more or less the same list of items that goes something like this. 
it always starts with the basic white cotton bottom-up shirt then you need a black blazer a little black dress tailored trousers a horizontal stripe shirt ballet flats skinny jeans um, this one has changed a little bit because they are trying to kill the skinny jeans but it is still part of the list for now black pumps a lightweight sweater more often than not it will be a turtleneck another sweater that will provide more warmth a knee-length pencil skirt a pair of boots or booties a camel coat or a trench coat a biker jacket a denim jacket a wrap dress that you can use as a sun dress but you can also just get a regular summer dress a basic bodysuit in a neutral color a pair of leggings a v-neck or crew neck t-shirt a pair of heeled sandals an everyday bag a tote bag, a mini bag or clutch, a pair of white sneakers, a belt, a pair of sunglasses, and about three dainty pieces of jewelry. I don't have much against the list. It can be a very useful guideline, but you have no idea of how many times people have told me that they bought that specific list of items, but they didn't like the way they looked on them, including myself when I started my fashion journey. The stiff white cotton shirt made me look like I was wearing my mom's clothes versus wearing a cream silk shirt. Or a very common problem when you're curvy, you don't always look good in a regular blazer, you have to look around for different styles. And what happens when you don't look that good in grey? or if you don't love the classic Parisian style. The point is that this specific capsule wardrobe isn't for everyone. Subscribe if you want to watch my video on how to adapt this list to your own needs and preferences. Why does your friend look better when you're both wearing the same dress, even if you have the same body type? Or why does this shirt work for me? but it doesn't look that great on my sister. This is where your body lines come in. Our bone structure and our flesh will determine what fabrics, what hairstyles, what patterns and silhouettes look good on us. Yin Yang style systems focus on five main families. Dramatics, naturals, classics, gamins and romantics. Some of them add more types, such as the ingenue, essence, angelic, and ethereals. They are also called body archetypes or style essences. Maybe you have heard about the Kiwi archetypes. This is a yin yang style system. I made an introduction video about it and I will be linking it here if you want to watch it. The final method would be intuition. This is about what feels right. I really like this approach, but it is very complex since it can be a hit or miss. Especially because there are so many options out there, it can be a bit hard to narrow down those options if you don't know how to do it. When it comes to personal style, I really like it because it serves as an incentive to experiment with different styles and trends. So it can be really fun, but also it can be very overwhelming. And the biggest downside is that it can get really expensive really quick. This is for everyone that wants to go into the fashion industry. When it comes to styling someone else, it removes the weight of that overwhelming feeling from the client. And it's also very fun because you're going to get to bond with them. You really need to understand every need, like and dislike of the person that you're working with because you will need to become their shopping buddy. You need to be very careful 
because this is all about the client, not about you. So you need to avoid imposing your own style while you're styling them. Be sure to listen and understand what they want and what they need, whether you're working for a person, a store or a brand. This is not just for fashion stylists, it also applies to fashion designers. Unless you're working for your own brand, you have to adapt your creations to the aesthetic and vibe of the brand that you're working for. That would be it. What have you tried? Have any style systems worked for you? Or was it too overwhelming? I certainly did think that this was a lot when I was in university, but it does get easier with time and practice. I like to take an approach that takes all of the four methods into account because in my opinion, color has nothing to do with body structure. Body shapes are a guide to understand the effect of visual weight. Body structure will determine what's going to look better but it also shouldn't determine your style. So all of them are tools for you to know how to look better and in the end, when you finally understand your body, you can start developing your own style. You can check my blog michaelimstand.com for styling guides or watch my other videos on all of these topics. And if you think that all of this is a lot and you want someone else to do it for you, you can hire me as your personal stylist at cocostyling.com. Also, I am going to finish my color season series. The missing types are soft and light. So if you're one of these types and you want me to use your pictures for the examples, you can send me an email to info at cocostyling.com. This will be very helpful for us, especially if you have a cool undertone. Have a nice day and I hope to see you next week.